And I'm sure Dave Ramsey would like to burn me at the stake. Yesterday, Damon and Dave from Daily Driven Exotics were here and we filmed some stories and did some stuff for their channel and just had a great time. And last night at dinner, we were talking about a bunch of stuff. And one of the things Damon asked me, he said, Ed, where did all your money come from? And I said, well, <laughs> there's a couple things there. First of all, this is Atlanta. So relative to Vancouver, where he comes from, everything is worth about 10% of what he thinks it ought to be. And so that we'll start there. But the real answer is, I don't have any. I mean, I have a lot of really, really cool stuff and I certainly don't have the liquidity or the wealth that would be responsible to have the kind of cars and toys and things that I have, but that's because the cars have been the vessel that have made me pretty much all the money I've ever had. And obviously he knew that making internet videos and having an early stage tech startup don't necessarily allow you to have cars like that. So it was a reasonable question. I've gotten it a lot lately on comments here. And now one of our favorite features about the VinWiki app is lists. People build lists of all types of things, but one of the most popular list is a list of all the cars you've owned. And so I obviously have one of these lists. It has all the 29 cars that I've had since I started driving. And it's cool to look back, see where they turn up, but I also to look at you know where the profits came from, you know how my credit evolved over the ability to buy all these cars. And so I thought it was worth kind of telling a little bit about where it came from and how the flips have worked over the years and, and how I've built up a lot of my wealth in cars. Because when you see someone who has a bunch of interesting cars that kind of is beyond what their job would normally allow them to have. It's worth asking, like, where does this really come from? Because certainly making internet videos doesn't allow you to have a fleet of interesting cars. So normally it's either gonna be an external source like family or debt. And for me, that's always been the answer. Unfortunately, my parents didn't give me some big pot of money to play with and buy cars with. They taught me a lot, have been very helpful, and I love them to death. They did actually give me my first two cars, which I'm eternally grateful for. My first car was a 1995 Land Rover Discovery. Just a great car, not reliable by any stretch, knocked like a tractor. I think I got it with about 130,000 miles. My dad had bought it new in 95, and I got it in 2001. And I drove it, loved it, got it stuck in the mud all the time. And then unfortunately, my mom was driving it at about 100 180,000 miles and didn't notice it was overheating and blew the motor. So it was pretty much total at that point. And so I just drove this car we had around. It was an old 1997 Pontiac Grand Am GT. And it was a stick and we'd all learned to drive a stick on it, me and my friends. And so the synchros were just destroyed. The car was super rough. And in fact, to put it into reverse, you had to turn the car off put it in reverse, then restart it and release the clutch and you can go backwards. So lots of fun and old junky cars are always great. But when I went off to college, since it was in-state and I had a bunch of scholarships and it was free, my parents bought me a B5 Audi S4, a 2000, and it had a bunch of APR mods and Champion Motorsports wheels. Just a t awesome car. That's the one I used for the New York to LA rally we did in 04 that MTV followed us across the country with. So had a ton of fun with that. And then a couple years later, that's what I used as the down payment for my Lamborghini Gallardo. I sold it for like 18 grand and got a loan for the rest for the first car, or for supercar rentals, the yellow 04 Gallardo. And didn't have enough money left to make the first payment, but fortunately business went well and I was able to make the payments. And over the next few years, I got a few more cars. And of course there were some unexpected expenses. A few months later, an abusive renter blew up the motor in that car. And that cost me like 40 or 50 grand that I did not have. But back then, I could do something with Groupon. Groupon would let you pre-sell rentals and they gave you all the money as soon as the sale period was closed. And so I sold enough rentals to pay for the motor and everything I had to do and then just spent the next year or so fulfilling those along with the regular rentals. So that ended up working out really well. But obviously, I, as I added other Ferraris and things to the rental fleet, you lose money on those cars. You sell them for less than you bought them for. But since the business model makes money, it's still a healthy enough financial decision and it continued to build up my credit because at this point I probably got about as good a car credit as a human being is capable of having. I could get a loan for just about anything which is a hugely empowering thing as you want to flip cars because it means you don't have to tie up the cash that you may not even have and that's really how it's worked. The first car I really flipped I didn't actually buy, my wife did. It was a 2000 Ferrari 360 that I had found and it was a birthday present from T-Pain to a up and coming Atlanta rapper that never really came up. But he got this car and it had sorted at his parents' house and they jumped it backwards. Fried all the electronics and I found the car for sale and uh, needed ECUs and computers and everything. But it was not, I, I didn't think that big of a deal. And I ended up buying it, or she did, for $31,000. That's what we negotiated. And so we fixed it for about $9,000. So I had 40 grand in it and sold it a few months later after driving it around for 60. So a great little flip, made a little bit of money, couldn't have been happier, and it was a great indoctrination for her into all the great things that can come from buying 
junky, old, unknown issue exotic cars. And that's pretty much the same thing we did a couple years later in 2011 with the prostitute Gallardo with Kimmy's car. Bought it for 30, spent 20 on it, sold it for 75. So made some good money, got to drive it for a while. I did finance that one to keep building the credit. But of course, you also have to have daily drivers. I drove that car every day eventually, but I'd always bought just, you know, some occasional things. I had another Discovery for a while. I had a 2003 S55 AMG, and I, this guy was asking like 23 grand for it. I bought it for $16,001, which I shrewdly negotiated after he had an offer in hand of $16,000 from CarMax. So I beat that offer. He took the number, and uh, we went on down the road. Unfortunately, a few months later, or very fortunately, a few months later, a guy made an illegal left turn right into my front bumper, totaled the car, totaled his car, and his insurance bought it for $27.5. So that was a great profit. I bought a cheaper S55 and drove it until I was daily driving the Gallardo. And you know, it's important not to lose too much money on your daily cars because those are more of a utility idea if you're trying to have cool cars and kind of flip them on the side. And so that ended up working out exceptionally well. And then I started buying the LP640s. The first one was an orange 08 Roadster. Bought it for $175, sold it for $182.5. Then I bought a red 07 E-Gear Coupe, bought it for 160, sold it for 175. Then I got the first manual car, and that was obviously the biggest win in dollars. I bought it for 215, the green 08 stick coupe, and sold it for 350 a little over a year later. So made 135 grand on one flip. That was fantastic. Used that to buy the gray car, bought it for 120, the theft, fraud, dealer, drunk, crash car from Canada that I have since found out. Went on vacation to Lebanon for a little while, which could have been where the title got washed, I suppose. But it came back in through Texas. I bought it from Vegas and drove it for a while. Spent about 20, 25 grand fixing it up and then sold it for 220. So that was a huge win as well. Then I bought the current one, the black car that's being painted, Verde Draco. Bought it for 185. I'll spend about 40 reconditioning and painting it. And I think it's worth about 300. So still a good but unrealized profit there. Of course, then you got the cannonball cars, which are not ever money making endeavors, but I think you add value. Like, I feel like compared to what I've spent on the CL and the S55 and the Brock Yates Audi, I put a ton of money into them. I don't intend to sell them, but I suppose if I did, I could probably realize a lot of that money back. But again, it's not that big of a deal, but it does represent the fact that a lot of the money that I've made in these cars is tied up in the ones that I still have, which you know tends to be what happens and is the reason there's not a lot of liquidity or investments elsewhere to justify you know the whole net worth picture of what this probably ought to distribute and look like. But I have done some other good flips back in uh, 2014 when Range Rovers were you know, bringing huge premiums for export. I bought a brand new, the only new car I've ever bought, 2014 Range Rover and sold it the next day for 45 grand over MSRP. So a fantastic flip, but unfortunately now I can't buy any more new Land Rovers, but worth it for that. Then of course, I bought the roof, bought it for 69 grand, spent five or six grand making it nicer, sold it for 154, so the best percentage-based flip. And then of course I bought the 993 and it was a great deal at 35 grand. Seems to be worth about 55, give or take. I haven't sold it yet, some other considerations. Still might do a million subscriber giveaway with it, but you never really know. I'm, I'm having fun or I'll replace it with something better and we'll give that away, I'm, I'm not really sure yet. But it's all worked out really, really well. And in fact, in most of those deals, I was financing all of the cars, like not putting any money down because you build up your credit and that becomes possible. You pay some interest, but it makes it all float along. And if you don't have the cash, it allows you to play in a bigger league than perhaps you're entitled to. So I've been really happy with how that's all worked out. As I was totaling it up, looking through all the cars, I think I've made about $550,000 in the last 10 years flipping interesting cars, which is a huge, I mean, obviously it's a ton of money. Uh, most of it is now still tied up in the cars I have, but I usually say buy cars that you really do want that also might go up because you just never know what the market's gonna do. And obviously a lot of people are critical of the risks associated with exotic car financing. And I'm sure Dave Ramsey would like to burn me at the stake, but I suppose I'll just have to live with that. At Dollar Shave Club, you're always in control. Simply choose the delivery dates and frequency that suits your schedule so you don't run out. Get a shave, shower, or oral care starter set for just five bucks at dollarshaveclub.com.